All right. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Cupcakes and Protein Shakes. I am your host, Savannah. We're doing another episode where we're interviewing a fellow athlete. So welcome to the show. Introduce your name. Tell me where you are from and like, where are you at? Are you in off season? Are you prepping? What are you doing right now? Hi, so I'm Glory Ann Carswell. I'm from the Seattle area. Um, I'm actually getting ready to go into a prep. I'm planning on competing this fall. Okay, so let's go into your journey and where it started. So what year was it? And like, when was the first time that you were introduced to the sport of bodybuilding? Yeah, so I was actually a lifelong athlete. And so I grew up riding horses, dancing, cheerleading. But my mom introduced me to the sport when I was 15 or 16. Um, she wanted to prove to my sister and I that you could do anything that you wanted to, no matter like what age. And so she was in her early forties and she did her first ever bodybuilding show. I saw the bikini girls and I absolutely fell in love. So I started training when I was about 16 and in my first show when I was 20, and then I actually retired long story short, gained weight and then came out of retirement and did my first show back at 25 and then 26. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Okay, let's jump into that. Why did you retire? My first um, introduction, like my first show was something that I really, I, I, if, I'm, if I'm honest, I hated the, the prep process. It wasn't something that I felt was like vibing with me at the time. Oh. I was in my early 20s and it was just something that um, I was not in a healthy place mentally or emotionally. And so after my show, I was like, let's just, you know, kind of take some time and do, do other things. And so I just kind of started living my life and went away from the prep life for quite a long time. Okay. So we'll definitely get into it. So I, this is an interesting start because it was from uh, a parent, which isn't something I've ever heard of. Before. Like, I don't think maybe someone has, but it's really rare that we have uh, someone's parent be the reason why that they're doing it. Um, so what was that experience like? Was your, did you guys prep together? Was she supportive of it? Was she hesitant of you jumping into it? Like bodybuilding? Yeah, no, my mom was, she's absolutely an amazing woman and she was very supportive. Her goal was to be able to do it in a healthful way and show us, like I said, that no matter what age you are, you can do something. And that had been like a lifelong dream of hers, but she'd always kind of put it on the back burner. And she's like, you know what? I think, I think she just turned 40 when she did her show. And she's like, I'm going to do this and prove to you girls that I can do it. And I saw the bikini athletes and she's like, you could easily do that. G like I support that. And so my mom was one. We've never been on stage together, but she's always walked me through that entire process, which has been like a really cool thing for us and like our relationship. Did she coach you? She did not coach me. No, she was a personal trainer and um, for a very long time, but she's actually retired. So, and I don't know that that would have worked out as well for us to be able to say, do, do it that much together, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I know. Cause there's, there's boundaries of, I, I need Sometimes it's like, okay, you can only tell me what to do for so long. And so I'm sure it was, it was cool to get to be on both sides of the stage. So start in a supportive role and then get to be on stage with your mom being in a supportive role. So it's really cool that that was able to happen. Um, but you, you talked about not having a great experience because unfortunately, usually for the first time, especially as a younger athlete being starting working out and starting as like a teen in your like earlier years, mentally, this sport's really hard. It's really, really hard, especially as a female, as a young female body image issues, like all of those different things. So how was that like from 16 to 20, that's a pretty important age time as far as like social that's going on. You're in high school. Did you going to college like what did your life look like outside of the sport yeah so it was interesting because I was always like a lifelong athlete so when I say I started training I wasn't competing between 16 to 20 I was just in the gym every day with my mom um I was also still doing like cheerleading and dance and that kind of stuff so I had a very active lifestyle I always knew that like I would want to compete someday. And then I ended up, I didn't do the typical college route. And so I was 20 years old when I finally stepped on stage for the first time. Okay. I think I was 20, 20 or 21 too, for the first time. And it's fun. Like you, like when you're young, like your body responds pretty well. Did you notice any difference of taking that time off? Cause how long were you retired for? 
I was retired from the age of 20 until I started losing weight when I was 24. So I had a good solid four years off. Wow. Okay. And what were you doing during that time as far as like training, nutrition, mindset? I wasn't doing anything. So I, um, I'll be very open. If my story can help anybody, I would love for it too. I had kind of gone through a rough period. I went through a really bad breakup and I just let myself go. That combined with the COVID-19 lockdowns and everything like that, I wasn't watching what I was eating. I was having really bad depression. And after 14 months, right after my 24th birthday, I realized I need to do something. Like my health was horrible. My fitness was horrible. And so I found out, um, I remember I, I'd gone on like a two week detox and I lost significant weight. I thought I'd be like 170, maybe 180 at most. And I was over 200 pounds. And I was, I, I knew in that moment, I need to make a commitment to myself to have an actual healthy, sustainable lifestyle. Wow. Wow. Okay. But yeah, that is so, okay. We're going to, we're going to bring up some, some feelings and thoughts like it happens, it happens before, and it's really hard post-show weight gain is happening, right? So your show, for, that's four years is a long time to be off. And like, what, what was that thing that like, kept you wanting to come back? Like when you're at that low spot, like what, like what was the wake up call for you? Or like, what were the action steps that you started to take once you kind of woke up, I'm out of retirement. I want to take control of it. Like what were some things that you started doing again? Yeah. So it was actually really interesting for me when I started my weight loss journey, I didn't really have the goal of competing in mind. I was kind of like, I just need to lose weight. So I started losing weight. I set the goal of 160 pounds, but as the weight started to come off and I would, you know, see new like records with my workouts, I thought, how fun would it be if I did it one more time, just come out of retirement, do one show, see if I like it this time I'm older, have, you know, different, different motivations and that kind of stuff. And so that's when I started delving into the idea of doing another show. I ended up finding angel competition bikinis on Instagram. And that was like seeing you guys was my motivation. And that's actually how I ended up connecting with Deb and glam girl bikini. Oh my gosh, that is a really cool story. I'm glad that you shared that with me. So what were you seeing that you liked that was different this time? It was overall, I I wanted to be able to find a community of other women that were going to be supportive and empowering with each other. And that was like, I've always been very community based and wanted to have like my girl tribe and the people that you're in it, not in competition with them, but it's the thing of you're only in competition with yourself. You can't view everybody else as your competition because at the end of the day, every time, at least for me, when I step on stage, I want to know that that's been my best prep yet and see the difference between my last show and this show. And that's what I saw with Angel Competition Bikinis and with Deb is the fact that, and Glam Girl, is that it's everybody supporting each other and we're all on this journey together for different reasons. And I think that's something that's really unique about the sport in general. Yeah. The sport has changed. Like I think in the beginning it was when bikini division started, like in the 2010s, 2011s, like that was still kind of, that was when I was like in high school and it was cool to be thin. It was kind of starting to be cool to lift weights as a female. It hadn't gotten it was still pretty niche it hasn't been super popular and so now I feel like there's this like second revolution of like female strength and empowerment and like getting strong through competing um and the community aspect too so at the beginning of my fitness journey I didn't know anybody I knew a couple one here and there but not super close friends so it kind of there was a transition period so I went from having like nobody and then started to kind of find online and like find people through shows and competing that were doing it. And then as like, I started competing, like I started to find those same people that were like not drinking and not going out and like wanting to eat healthy and not wanting to go out. And it's hard to find that usually near you. Like most of us don't have that huge community locally. So we have to kind of go online and be like, where are the fitness people that I can hang out with and that I can be around? Because once you get into it at first, it's a little intimidating. It does take time to build the community, but it is there. 
every time I go to a show, I always meet new people and everyone's the same place. Like we just want to like make friends, like make fitness friends, like work out, like, oh, did you have a cool prep? And everyone gets to connect like instantly, especially like on this podcast too. I don't need to know anything. All I need to know is you've competed before. You've gone through the press, but you've gone through that process. You know what it's like to be an athlete. So it's really easy to relate to every athlete that comes on. So now what is the plan? So we're going back to compete in fall. So feedback wise and like show total. So how many times have you competed so far and what has been the feedback you've been working on? So I've competed three times in total, um, two times since coming back. So at 25 and 26 was when I was on stage. Um, I was supposed to compete last year, but unfortunately I had an injury. One of the biggest things for me right now is that one upper body has always been so hard for me to build. And so I actually started venturing out and besides just lifting, I've taken up like boxing and kickboxing and tried to go different fitness routes. And I've seen a huge improvement already in my upper body. And that's something I'm definitely toying with for this next prep is seeing what can um, other, other sport varieties do to make impacts on my physique. The other thing I'm really... um focusing on is coming to the realization that my skin I, I have loose skin from losing 80 pounds that's something that I'm working on tightening up naturally but having to kind of like work with my body as I go yeah and let's talk about that because this is something that comes up a lot um and you don't really realize it's going to happen until you're lean right like you don't realize that the fat is taking up space in your skin. Your skin is stretching to make yourself bigger. And then when the fat's not there, the skin still takes time to shrink down. So naturally, is there any tips or advice that you've, that have anything at all that has worked for you for someone else that might be have some like loose skin? As for loose skin, I have been using like body butters and that kind of stuff. And I can't remember the brand that I was using. I can send it to you after this, but, um, that's one. And really I'm, I'm very blessed. I will say I have naturally pretty fatty skin. And so I should have more stretch marks and loose skin than I have. And my skin has really tightened itself up naturally. It's just having the time and the patience to work with my body and to acknowledge where I came from and how each day my actions are getting me one step closer to not having that loose skin and having more muscle there to take that place. Yep. And that happens no matter what, like, even if you're going on a five, 10 pound cut at the end, like when you're lean, it's there, there's loose skin, no matter how many pounds that you lost, like when you, your skin is like paper thin lean, like that's when you like pinch yourself and you're like, oh, you're, you're just like a little skeleton. So no matter what, that's always something like as an athlete, you're going to have to deal with loose skin like skin tightening creams, but usually it's just time, like giving your body the time without the fat to kind of readjust because it takes time because it can stretch, but it can also go back, but it does take time to go back there. Um, and the muscle too, like muscle being able to push the more muscle you build, it's going to push back that skin. So sometimes like even though it feels loose now, but if you, you know, switch the fat for muscle, it's going to give the same look as if it was tighter anyway. So just building size and just trying to get there. I have an issue where I have thick skin. So I like uh, to get that lean paper thinness. I have to really build my almost overbuild my glutes to push the skin and the muscle because it comes down like everyone's different of the different feedback that you've been going through and upper body. So I like that you're trying something new because it's not always one size fits all for growing upper body for legs for feedback. And do you like kickboxing and boxing? Like, is it a fun change? It's been really, I did not think I would like it, but it's been a really fun change for me. So it was funny. My dad's one of his best friends is a former fighter and he trains people. And he was like, Hey G, I'm going to, I'm going to make you train with me. And I was like really hesitant and I fell in love and it's, he does it in a self-defense way too. So I know that like, not only am I getting a killer workout, but if anything happened, I know I can defend myself. Now I know the basics of self-defense and it's always something again, just like with competing, always something new to work on, always something to strive towards. Like you could set little mini goals. And that's something that like has built a whole new confidence in myself is trying this new thing and falling in love with it. Love that. 
because like sometimes like if you're prepping, it's just the same boring ass workouts. You're doing your hamstring curls, you're doing your hip thrusts, you're doing your shoulder and press and your lateral raise. And it's just so boring, but I think it's great to bring this up. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to just be in a commercial gym with the dumbbells. Like you can find creative ways to move your body. You can go outside. It doesn't have to be cardio on the treadmill. It can be a workout class or a boxing or whatever you enjoy, but you have to make it work for your physique goals too. So as long as it fits in, you have fun doing it, you can definitely add different things as well. So let's jump into what you just brought up is the self-confidence and like setting small goals and like building trust and confidence in yourself. So how do you do that? Like, do you write it down? Is it just mentally? Like, how do you make small goals for yourself? Yeah. So when I first started my, and I'm going to go back to like, when I first started like my weight loss journey, the day that I knew I had to, I literally woke up and told myself today, I'm going to eat a salad. I'm going to do a workout. And that was like, when I would do it, I would be like, okay, I made a promise to myself that I fulfilled. And that's how it kind of started. And then I started like taking myself on dates, which sounds weird, but I would be like, you know what, today I'm going to do this. And I would make it almost like a date of like, I get to be with myself today. I'm going to do something to pour into myself. And as that would start to happen, as I would start to hit those little goals with myself, I would say, Hey, you know what? I just built a little bit more trust in myself. And that's how for me, I started building a self-confidence that I had not experienced before. And then being able to adjust my goals as I went to without coming down hard on myself. So when I first started losing weight was November 1st of 2020. And my goal was to be on stage in October of 21. Unfortunately, with losing 80 pounds, you know, one, your physique isn't necessarily guaranteed to be stage ready in less than a year. But the other thing is my best friend passed away unexpectedly two months before my show. And so I ended up backing out and I was like, okay, I can't just let this, this derail my entire success. I get to readjust my goals and say, okay, right now, mentally, I'm not in a place where I can be on stage. What can I do to get myself on stage? And so I ended up picking out a show for April of 2022 and saying, okay, I'm going to continue working on those micro goals getting me to the goal of being on stage in April and then sure enough I ended up getting to be on stage that April in Iowa with glam girl bikini oh I'm so excited to hear this but I you know I'm sorry that your friend passed away um is there anything with that there like how were you able to cope with that during a prep that was a really strange time just because it was almost like I was in so much shock but at the same time, it almost fueled my fire of, you know what, his life was cut short, but I get to have the rest of my life. And I don't want to have my life in a way of um, living it unhealthfully, if that makes sense. I want to be the best the person that I can be to honor his legacy and do all of the things that we had talked about and all the things that he'd always dreamed of in his honor. And so that was something that really did actually add to my goals and fuel my fire. So I knew that even though his untimely death postponed my goal of being on stage, it was that, and it was the fact that my physique wasn't ready, but it really did put a whole new emphasis on it. I've got to continue working on my health and physique and that kind of stuff to push forward. Yeah. So I have a similar kind of origin story. So my younger sibling passed away, which started this whole thing. So it was, a. Uh, it was a, I don't, all I knew was like health. I just saw, I was like mental health. I was like, there's nothing more valuable than time. And if I can work out every day, just one hour a day, and that's going to get me extra years later on when I'm old, then why, like, why not? It's really not that hard to spend 30 minutes to an hour to yourself, just to put towards health, like health and fitness. It, It was just kind of a, an eye-opening thing. So I feel like unless you've had someone really young or close to you pass away, like even grandparent, parent, whatever it is, like to feel that grief, it makes you like grounded and appreciate your health. It makes you appreciate life a little bit more. And it does make you want to like be your best and to do it healthy and to take care of yourself because like you have gratitude that you are alive, right? So you do you don't, you don't want to just kind of, you know, throw 
push it into your body. And like, you kind of, for, for me, when I think about it, it was like a, why do I need to feel sad? Like I have an extra day to live. That should be enough. So mm-hmm. like, I, I really do feel for you and I'm sorry that you had experienced this, but, um, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is something that's a tool that will be with you. And like, it will hurt that I've just seen when something bad happens and you have a low, low, it helps you experience the next high, high. So like kind of knowing like, okay, that's my rock bottom of depressed and sad. And, but everything else that like every day, as long as, as long as you have your health, like it's a good day. So I, you know, I'm glad that that you're okay and that you are, you know, living up to his legacy and it's, it's really inspiring. So can't wait to see where you continue to go with this and like starting here and your podcast and sharing your story is a great way to do it. Um, especially 80 pounds. Cause like I've lost 25 pounds. So I can't imagine like that was my big transformation. I can't imagine doing that almost three times over because it could seem that's a big goal. It's not that, like that's a very huge accomplishment and you should be very proud of yourself because that's a big that's a big deal because there's a lot of people that they can't they can't get past it they can't build that trust and like you you didn't make it crazy you didn't say I'm gonna lose all 80 pounds overnight you didn't say anything about that you're just like I'm gonna do one thing that I know I can accomplish and that gives you it's it's not so big it's not so scary just all I want to do is just do one thing, eat one salad, make one healthy decision. And it just spirals and spirals. It, but the, the inverse, it's really easy. The negative mindset. If you have one little thing, oh, I'll just skip one workout and skip one rep. And then it becomes a cycle of whatever. And it's easier one week or one missed workout becomes a week, becomes a month, becomes a year, becomes whatever. So it, it, goes both ways. And I'm, is there anything else that you can speak to of like how, cause I like how you were talking about like taking yourself on, on dates and, and, and treating yourself right. Cause I feel like, um, a lot of people don't love themselves or like take care of them. So what else have you done to prioritize like your mental health through now this prep of like knowing everything that you know now? Yeah. Um, like I said, taking myself on dates to hit those goals and like really writing out what do I want my actual like life to look like? Do I want to be watching TV or what I, would I rather read a book? And that was like one of the things that started me in this was like when I would start going on dates, I would take myself to the bookstore and then I would go to the grocery store and get stuff to meal prep. And I would go home and I would like meal prep and like have fun with it, listen to music, read a book, take a bath. And that was like my night by myself and that's something that I've tried to take into each and every one of my preps is like having my time of phone is off I'm unreachable I get to go get myself a good book or listen to a good podcast or whatever it is I do and I'm you know I'll, I'll figure out things to do by myself that will keep me on track with my goals but also give me that time to like reflect and meditate on everything that I have going, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. A really important word is get to, or I guess little sentence is the flip of not I have to, but I get to, I swear if you fix your language and you, the way that you think of, it's not necessarily, I have to do this. It's I get to, because prep is a privilege it, not everyone can afford the lifestyle to have access to foods, to competing, to all the different things, to have the mental strength to handle it. Like, it, so you're saying like, I get to, I get to do, like, imagine if you woke up in, tomorrow and you said, I get to eat healthy food that makes me feel good. I get to go to the bookstore. I get to do this. If you just switch it instead of, oh, I have to go to work today. Oh, I have to go to the gym today. It's like, no, I get to go to the gym. This is so much fun. That small mindset shift is so powerful and impactful. Um, But there's some haters as far as competing goes. So Mm -hmm. tell me about negative comments about physique, about competing. What has been your experience? Yeah, it's just, it's really interesting. Bodybuilding is um, a very unique world and people that have not done it or are not involved don't necessarily always understand it. And especially coming from a background of losing weight, it's interesting how people try to speak into your life no matter what. And it's, you would look better if you look like this. You need to continue dropping weight. You need to gain weight. 
And that was something that I had to learn very quickly how to filter out is because I remember hitting 15 pounds down, just not even wanting to compete just in my weight loss. And I had somebody say, there's no way you're doing that just through food and exercise. Tell me when you, when you're going to be honest about actually like how you're losing weight. And I was really shocked by that because I was like, you know, I, I'm making the decision to make my life healthier and better. And then as I went into prep, I would have people say, Hey, you know what? You're looking a little bit too skinny. Are you looking to this? And I, I always say I'm a people pleaser in recovery. And so that would always get to me where I was like, Oh my gosh, am I, and having to be able to filter out and say, no, I'm doing something for myself. I don't have to care what other people think or say. And that's something that even now, you know, I'm 150 pounds right now. I'm not at stage ready. This is my sitting weight. And I'll have people say, are you ever going to look thin again? Are you ever going to compete again? Are you going to look a certain way? Yeah, I can't be 130 pounds year round because that's not what's right for my body. This is a good weight for my body. And that's something that I would love for any athlete, especially anybody looking into going to the sport, is to understand you're not going to look stage lean year round. It's not a healthy thing for you. And you have to be able to say to yourself that the opinions and thoughts of others, the words of others, cannot mentally impact you. Because if you allow those little comments to get to you, it's going to destroy you. Oh my gosh. Yes. I could talk for days about this because everyone, they want to have, but they like throw a mirror at you and it's never, it's never about you. It never is. And it takes, and it's hard. It's easier said than done. Right. But when I, like, let's say when I first started, I would bring my meal prep to work or I'd going out, family dinner, everything. I took it everywhere. I didn't care. I didn't care what anyone else was eating. But suddenly, because I'm making one healthy decision, now everyone cares what I'm eating. Is that healthy? Oh, don't judge me. I'm only having one. Oh, or then let's say I wanted to go have a treat meal. Can you have that? Or if I wanted to post about it. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, are you not dieting? You're not taking it serious? Like, oh my gosh, I thought that's healthy. Is that bad for you? If I had a diet soda, oh my God, that's going to kill you with all the chemicals, blah, blah, blah. All these little comments of, oh, I like you better when you're leaner. I like you better when you're thicker and you're off season and these little chattery, chitter, chatty, chit chits. And it's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I was like, I, <laughs> I can't be stage lean. Yeah. And it's hard mentally see, having seen yourself gone through a prep and seeing the leanness and be like, oh yeah, I did achieve that. And people thinking that you let yourself go. Meanwhile, you're training 10 times harder in the off season, but you might just mm-hmm. have body fat because the next time you get lean, you're going to look 10 times better, but they can't see it because there's a, there is a miseducation misconception for weight loss in general of how that works. And, 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 and competing is the extreme because there's general health and fitness that is not being meticulous that is not being weighing everything to the gram, to the T, to the whatever, to the have to get my workout. And no matter what, when you have to get on stage in a little tiny bikini, you do need to be tracking every gram that goes into your mouth. You have to get the sleep to recover. You have, everything does matter. But if you, unless you've gone through a prep, you really can't speak about anyone's physique. So the just, you know, like, like when we're in kindergarten, like the golden rule is treat others, how you want to treat yourself. That should be the same for comments online. Just be very mindful. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're one of those people, like, I don't know what's wrong with you, but same, like (laughs) fill people's cup up in a good way of, Hey, crushing it. And it's like, be, I try to be mindful of like comments that I make on other people's physique of not necessarily, you're just looking amazing or uh, whatever. It's just like, Oh my gosh, so fun. Like great hard work. Like just the emphasis in the person, not in the aesthetics, because the mm-hmm. aesthetics are going to go up and down. You're going to gain body fat. You're going to gain muscle. Your, your weight's going to go up and down, up and down as an athlete. And that's just the reality of it. Especially as a first time competitor, I didn't know that I was going to gain all the weight again. I thought I was going to look shredded forever. I got to the condition and I didn't realize that like post-show that you could put on body fat really quickly. I had I didn't think that was a thing. I thought I deserve all this pizza and cake and stuff post show. It's not going to affect me. I'm lean. It, I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're not special too. So I'm I'm glad that we're bringing up those comments. And I'm sorry that you're having to go through that too because it's not fair. It's not fair that you get hate when you make healthy decisions. 
and then you get hate the other way. It's like, you guys got to pick a side. Like, what are we doing here? And so the only person that opinion matters is yourself. I have um, befriended myself through many hours of cardio, me and my best friend, which is just me and myself during cardio. We have a good time. We go watch TikToks. We have videos. We go to the gym together because it is going to be, you know, you're me, myself and I through this prep, there's not going to be anyone holding your hand when you're tired and you're hungry. So you do have to be very strong mentally to handle the comments, especially from friends and family members that are close to you that don't understand what they kind of do and just handle it with grace. Like you just feel free to educate them of, you know, Hey, I don't like when you guys make those comments about my body it makes me uncomfortable. Could we not like, sometimes you do have to stand up for yourself just so they know, like, this isn't okay anymore. It's like, sometimes, yeah, I'm going to have pizza with you guys. Sometimes I'm going to not be able to, but it doesn't mean anything. It's just what I'm doing. You guys don't need to be concerned with what I'm eating or what I'm doing with my body. So I'm glad that we brought that up too, just because like, I can't believe that's still going on now. Yeah. And that's one thing I've gotten a lot better about being able to do is like, understand like when I'm in it, it's my own decision. And one thing that I would also say to people is that your friend group, as you go through life, no matter what competitor or not, your friend groups will change. But especially when you go into a prep, you have to understand there might be some people that don't understand it to the point of you might end up finding yourself distancing yourself from them. And that's something that you have to be okay with. Because of the fact that this is at the end of the day, it's a selfish sport. You have to, be able to put yourself first for a season. And that's not just like for forever, but for that season, you get, you get the opportunity to say, I'm going to work towards my goals and I'm not going to listen to the negativity. And you're going to put, you get to choose who you're surrounding yourself with. It might be more of your gym friends or even just like more of yourself during that time. Yeah. And it's true. And it's, if, if it goes well, as you continue and your physique gets better, it's going to get worse. You're going to get more comments. You're going to get more opinions. You're going to get more people tuning in. And it's, so you do need to have a very, uh, you know, positive relationship with yourself, no matter what. And that goes for everyone, whether you're competing or you're retiring or not, it's, it's the world is a hard place. And if you're hard on yourself, it's going to, it doesn't have to be that way. You have to live inside your own head every single day. Right. So you, better make sure you like yourself mm -hmm. definitely so goals wise what is your hope like what is your hopes to accomplish like what do you plan on retiring do you have a game plan like are you taking it show by show like what do you want to do with this right now i'm taking it show by show um this the show that i have picked out for this fall that i'm aiming to do is actually OCB. So I did my first three shows were NPC and I'm switching over to OCB for this show. I want to get through this and bring the best package I have yet. You know, like I said, I got injured last year, so I couldn't compete. And then after this show, I'm going to readjust and see what my goals are. If I want to continue competing or if it looks like I'll end up retiring again this time on better terms. Okay. Yeah. I like that. And I like that you're making a change. Was there any reason behind that? Um, I really like the look of the WBFF actually. And, um, for myself, and I know I've heard a little bit about your story of being an NPC and you would feel like you had just gotten like that much closer, but with each adjustment, you felt like you're almost a little bit farther. And with my, with my physique so far, I'm not saying I couldn't do it, but I didn't feel like my body was one that was competing well in the NPC. And I don't want to go and spend all this time and that kind of stuff just to basically get my ass kicked on stage. And that's something where like, while you are competing against yourself, I wanted to be able to say, you know, could I end up doing something in this world, but I wanted to be able to work with my body. And that's something that um, I talked to my coach about and um, really kind of started toying with the idea of, okay, like, should I just stay with NPC? And so in talking to my coach, they were kind of like, Hey, I'm, uh, I think that it might be good for you to have other options and try different federations. And so that's why I chose to do this show this fall is that it's going to be, um, a new experience for me. Yeah. And so again, same experience, very similar of, I would get it like 
10 steps closer to the goal or the standard, and then the standard would evolve and they'd want more muscle or more glutes or more conditioning. So I got damn it back to the drawing board. Then I would take an off season, build, work, work really hard, get back on stage. And it's like, hey, it is better. You're getting there. But then again, standards like kept changing. Um, and, it, and it sucks to put in so much hard work and to be really proud of your physique and you're killing it. Mindset is amazing. Basically, just go get your ass kicked on stage. It's really not fun to lose. No matter what, you should do it for you. But you should do it in a place where you you can thrive because there are so many different organizations. And it, each one has its strengths and its benefits, and each one has different standards for the, what they're looking for as far as conditioning goes. So maybe your body type can't fit, you know, a square peg in a round hole. So go find where you do fit and try out different things. And that it takes time and it's, it's scary and to do a new federation and a new thing, but it's fun because what if you really like it and you find your niche, um, bodybuilding it, it, you don't, you don't have to compete to be a bodybuilder. You, once you, you can, you can cut, you can do all the things you can live the life. You can prep your food. You just literally take control of your physique through diet and exercise. You don't ever have to get on stage if you don't want to, to be a bodybuilder. Cause there's a lot of athletes like you can, um, I guess, I don't know if there's, if there's a criteria or who picks that, or if there's a bodybuilder or police, but you can still live this lifestyle and not get on stage or, or get on stage and, re and retire, do it once, try it out, see if you like it, and then just live a healthy lifestyle. So I'm excited to see your debut as a new athlete. It's, it's always fun to do something new for the first time. Um, what about, uh, let's talk about protocols and like diet helps, like what helps you with food? So like, were you during that period of that window when you were off, like what did your meals look like compared to now? And like, what are you eating for meals? What type of foods do you like to eat? Yeah. So uh, are, are you wondering about like before I lost like the 80 pounds, what did my meals look like versus now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So back then I really, I ate anything and everything. Like I ate junk food and drank soda all the time. And it was just, anything bad that you could put into your body, I did. Um, I'd gone through like a really rough period and food really was my drug of choice. That was like how I would kind of cope with everything. And so that's why, like, I don't know why I'm like this, but when I knew I had to lose weight, it was just something in me just like clicked into fight mode. And it was easy for me to snap over to just cutting everything bad out and just eating like super healthy whole foods. And it was, um, I'm a nerd. I love reading. I love studying. And so as I would go along, I would try different dietary lifestyles and I've actually landed on a pescatarian lifestyle. So that means I eat seafood, but no like bland meat. And that's what really has worked for my body. Um, and so right now I've been tracking my macros and, um, getting my protein in through like seafood and that kind of stuff. And I'm also in a period of starting to toy with different recipes and start seeing what like cooking different things might look like and finding new, new ideas on Instagram as well, because I never want to be so close minded of, I have to be on a meal plan or I have to do this, that it like boxes me into something that might not be enjoyable for me. Yeah. Okay. I love that so much because there isn't a one size fits all for the food groups. The choice is just like training, just like adding in boxing. It's like, you don't just have to use a treadmill. You don't just have to use dumbbells and it, the doors for nutrition are wide open. There is hundreds of thousands of ways to eat. You can't, there's vegan bodybuilders, there's pescatarian, there's vegetarian ones. There's people that only eat like the bro style, the meal plans, the macro people, the people that believe in like cheap meals and burgers and whatever's or the whatever. They're like fat, like ketos. There's all these types of diets and everything. So you should try a variety of it. And like, if something's not working, like mix it up every prep, I swear my body is different. My taste buds change as I age, what I like is changing. So every prep is different. Every diet's different. Sometimes I randomly was like, I'm going to try vegan protein powder. It didn't go vegan. I just wanted to try it out and it was fun. And sometimes I'll do fish Sometimes I'll do ground turkey. Sometimes I'll do lean meats. I just, I mix it up too. And 
having that variety and like fun with your food, it does not need to look the same every single day. Like try different recipes. I was shocked when I found out my coach was like, I, I didn't think I for like the three to five years, I didn't think if you were on prep, you could go out to a restaurant. Like, like nobody told me that you could still go out to a restaurant. I thought that was considered going out to eat. So I, I had this weird, uh, like it was a barrier for me of, I can't eat healthy at a restaurant. I thought I had to eat bad. And it, it just was this weird rule that I made up in my head. So every time I'd go out to eat, I would get, I'd either not eat because I didn't know how to order and I didn't know how to macro track. So I had just been on a meal plan and I was locked into meal plan only. If it's not on a meal plan, it doesn't count. But then come to figure out, oh, the meal plan is based in macro. So if I swap things out, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It took me time. And you have to just make these mistakes through your journey. So is there any notable mistakes that you remember from either the beginning now, like what are some mistakes that you made? I will say, especially from being young, I used to, um, when I was training, I would always eat meat. And that was something that I, my body did not react well to meat. I didn't feel good when I ate it. And that was something, and that was a blessing like with Deb is that she was like, yeah, if you want to cut meat out, let's, let's do more of a pescatarian vegetarian diet. And so I think learning to like, listen to your body. And that's something that I fought against because I was like, well, in the textbooks, it says this, or, you know, so-and-so says that, but you have to be willing to like, listen to your body and see what it says. And that was like one of my biggest mistakes. And when I cut meat out of my diet, I was like a whole new person. Like I had whole new like levels of energy and so many health problems I had that went away. And that's something that, you know, I'm not saying that for other people, that's something every body is different and that's what works for my body. And you know what, a year, 10 years down the line, it could change. It could adjust itself. So people need to be willing to like, especially athletes, listen to your body and what it's telling you. And I think that that's something that um, we, we've kind of lost, lost the ability to listen to our bodies over time. And that's something that for myself, I'm really trying to bring back into play. Yeah. Like a gut feeling is a, it's a real thing. It's not, you're not having gas, like a gut feeling of something, a little voice in your head. That's like something's not right. Or I just, you, you have that little just intuition of, maybe we should do this. And it just keeps coming back. You, you, you should listen. You should listen. It's coming up for a reason. We are really intelligent and we're really right now reliant on doctors and coaches and social media, whatever, to tell us how to eat and live and train what's best. But it is rare that we actually like look within, like, what do I think I, need? what do I feel like what to, what, what, what do I think that, because if you really truly like listen, you're going to know, you're going to know what you need, but sometimes we don't give ourselves room to listen because we're distracted or we're just not paying attention. So sometimes it does take a little like self-reflection and just like, like you were saying, like, I just, I don't know how that came up of pescatarian. You researched it, maybe you had an idea, thought about it, looked into it, then brought it up. Like it's just something small. So listening to yourself, listening to your body, feedback, and like you are working with a coach, you got to not just, it's, it's good to be a prep soldier, right? You get a protocol, you do your protocol, but a great coach client relationship is built through trust and you have to provide feedback. They don't know if something is hurting your stomach or it's really hard for your schedule to fit in this type of training, whatever it is, unless you provide that feedback. So you got to keep that honest, open relationship. Hey, yeah, not a problem. Let's try a new diet. Yeah. And again, you'll be pretty surprised. Like to, you can basically do it however you want within reason. What else? Because I feel like you have so much wisdom for being like relatively young and I'm not, I'm really like two years older than you. So I'm not that much older than you, but I feel like you've gone through like a huge journey. So anything else that you can think back about competing like that, you really want to make sure that we covered and shared. I think one thing I would say to anybody who's looking at the sport or looking to, you know, change their life, lose weight, whatever it is, is that when you change habits, 
you don't get to just cut something out of your life. You have to be able to replace it with something else. And so being able to step back and say, okay, what, what's happening in my life now? What do I want my life to look like? And how am I going to get there? What needs to be taken out? And what's, what habits are going to replace that? Because just the same as like with food of, okay, I'm, you know, say you're overweight and you want to lose weight and it's, it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen if you continue with your bad habits, but being willing to switch those habits out and say, you know what, instead of having this over here, I can eat this instead and building your habits based on that. So every time you take something out, you have to replace it with something else. Oh, yes. Yes. I love habits. I am obsessed with habits. And if you try to just, I've been, I always, I always try to just make better habits and make a goal of them. And if you, it, it's it, to eliminate something, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. I'm just not going to do something that I've done habitually every day for the rest of my life. Like it's, it's really not. So habit stacking is something that I have done and it doesn't take a lot. Like habits compound over time in a good way, in a bad way, like everything's exponential. So always imagine your habit and you multiply it times like 50 to a hundred years. So if I continue this action times the rest of my life for a hundred years, and is, is this going to give me the result that I want? Right. Mm -hmm. Even though it seems small, one decision every day, that decision of what you're going to eat, if you keep doing that a thousand times for a hundred years, are you going to have the body that you want? Are you going to have diseases? Are you going to have all this stuff? So you got to be able to think about that of, okay, if I skip one workout this week, what is that going to look like over time? I'm not going to have the physique I want. I'm not going to be able to progress to how I want and, and do something different. So let's say something that you do well every day, like brushing your teeth. Most of the, I hope most people, brush <laughs> I hope most people, you know, use the bathroom in the morning. Like that's something that's, it's habitual. So like have it stack it. Maybe when you brush your teeth, you think about positive affirmations or you, um, when I brush my teeth, I, uh, I wash my face next or after I go the back, I don't know, whatever it is. Like you do two of them together. Like if this, then this happens, like at night, um, at a certain time when the clock hits eight, I will, I already know that I have to eat dinner. So like after, after dinner, I will clean up the kitchen and I can't go to bed. And I, I won't get into bed until I do my routine or something like that. Like, and you just kind of have to play with it. I think it is beneficial to do a habit audit, something that I've done and it's, and it just, it takes a long time to do. But what I did once was I like, I got up at the very beginning of the day and I just wrote everything that I was doing, like every single thing. And then I started to look at it. Of like, do I, can I add anything, take it away? Is there anything like, where am I procrastinating? Was this a good choice? And then you just kind of like add, I made a checklist. So my, I'm in kind of, kind of figure out why, like I was having a hard time getting all of my cardio. Why am I having a hard time getting all my cardio? Oh, it's because I procrastinate in the morning. Okay. Why do I procrastinate in the morning? I don't have a morning routine. I don't have a habit that I follow. It's just kind of random. So then I set a bedtime and I had a specific time that I woke up every single day. So habits are so powerful. If you can, you can utilize them for good. You can utilize them for bad, but everyone has habits regardless. If you know you're building habits or not, you are making like everyone has really like really bad habits and it is hard to break them, but it, it can be done. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. So we're what three shows deep We're how many weeks out? I honestly don't even know. It's in the beginning of October. Um, so I'm not sure how many weeks out that is, but I'm getting ready right now to start adjusting and seeing what this prep looks like. Where is your macros in like cardio training? Like how often do you train now? Right now I'm training every day. Um, I'm actually, this is my first week. I'm switching it up. So I've joined a new gym. Um, that's going to be, um, a lot more, it's going to be very, um, boxing and kickboxing intensive. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking at for this prep is really seeing what I can do with this gym, because I started doing boxing and kickboxing about eight months ago, I want to say back in September. Um, 
and that was just like one on one, like 30 to 40 minutes with my trainer. And I had so much fun. But these are like an actual like intense boot camps, an hour a day. So I'm going to be doing those three to five times a week. And that's going to be something I really want to experiment with for this show. That's kind of what I'm building my my show based off of is this this new training program. Ooh, that'll be so cool to see like how your physique changes, but just like it, because it's a pretty big, like training, changing your whole training type is going to be interesting to see like a side-by-side of like, okay, this is when I was doing this type of workout. This is when I was doing this type of workout. What did it do? Did, did it make my upper body bigger? What did it look like? So I'm excited to see, is there any like final pieces of advice that you'd like to leave us with today? No, I don't think so. I think really just like I said, you know, be willing to adjust as you go and like listen to your body. And it's not about competing against other people. It's about competing against yourself. And that's what this sport and really what life is about is making making sure that you're the best version of yourself that you can be. Mm -hmm. I love that. If anyone wants to follow you or your journey, where can they do it? Yeah, it's on Instagram and it's Florian underscore Carswell. Okay, last fun question. Are you team cupcake? Or are you team protein shake? Cupcake for sure. And okay, if you could be a cupcake or your favorite flavor, what would it be? There's a local place over in the um, Seattle area and they have like a pink champagne cupcake and that's my all-time favorite. Oh, that sounds so good. I see, I love all sorts of desserts and treats and everything. So mm -hmm. I love a little sweet, savory cupcake. Well, okay, I appreciate you coming on today. We'll get your episode up in the next couple of weeks. I hope you have an amazing prep. I can't wait to see you on stage next. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome.